I was involved in finding the, the BRCA2 gene in 1995. Why having this one change in your entire genome, you have 3,000 million bits of information in your genome, you need to change one of those to have this very high risk of, of cancer. So why is it? If you look carefully, in most tumors, there's a small subset of those who have a BRCA mutation. So, and that what if someone has a gallbladder tumor and we look for a BRCA mutation, we would offer such a person either different chemotherapy or a PARP inhibitor. So it's actually important to not do the knowledge to expand. And I think that's why we think our, our BRCA center is, is so relevant to really bring this together. This is not a silo, this is not an ovarian cancer, a breast cancer. What we figured out after a while was that cells that have this mutation aren't very good at fixing breaks that happen in DNA. And it turns out your DNA is quite fragile in every cell of your body. It's not that you completely lose the ability to fix the DNA, you're just slightly less good at doing it. And that causes mutations, which causes cancer. What's really relevant now is to say, I didn't realize that knowing my bracket status would affect my treatment options. And I just think that that's a big takeaway. My father would not be alive uh, he, had he not known that he had BRCA mutation. And we do act on knowing whether someone has a mutation. So we actually recommend for patients with a BRCA mutation to start screening with breast MRI every year at the age of 25. Breast MRI has been shown by multiple, multiple studies um, to be the most sensitive examination for the detection of breast cancer, and it detects breast cancers at their smallest size and at a lower stage than mammography. I have a patient whose sister died in her early 30s of ovarian cancer, and she came to me in her early 20s to talk about uh, what should I do? And uh, we've talked about earlier screening uh, for her because of the uh, age of onset of her sister. We now have the ability in terms of fertility options that someone can do, and the embryos can actually be screened for BRCA. So I think the one-year plan is clearly, if I had my rotters, People like Laura would not walk into my clinic with an 11 centimeter tumor because we would have known before that and screened. And you look at the family and you look at their BRCA mutation and said, like, we could have prevented that. That we can do now. Can you detect DNA from a cancer that they don't know they have in the blood? If that experiment works, the first population that will be screened will be the BRCA population. The BRCA population are the ones that are going to benefit first. Hopefully in 20 years, we, we can eliminate uh, this mutation by either taking the gene out or not passing it on, and that's all doable. It could save your life if you are found to have a BRCA mutation. It, it could prevent cancer, and as Laura says, it can inform the treatment so that you get a better outcome. I was very grateful, and my mother and my sister were very grateful to have the genetic counselors at UCSF. I think that's such an important part of getting tested. This is what we're all about at UCSF. It's like we have a team to approach a patient in a comprehensive manner. We have so many better screening methods now and treatments and preventative strategies.